Uh, my name is Gus Skyano, as I said, and I'm the Vice President of Workplace Transformation at Scotiabank. You're going to see the synergy in all the talks because I'm going to describe what we're doing at Scotiabank, and it's uh, a little bit like what we've just seen from Sun Life from Katrina. I think, in certain respects, you'll see that we've dialed some things up to 11, uh, and we'll see if, if, uh, if that is a useful concept for you guys. Um, and uh, that, why don't I jump into it? I guess I was going to say, Katrina, we, we started using the word agile as well to describe the way we work. And of course, uh, we have about, about 8,000 developers in Toronto who use agile in a different way. And, and I've learned that having the same name for two things is a bad idea. <laughs> Although it would be great for your kids, wouldn't it? If you just gave them all the same name, it would just be easier at dinner time. But um, uh, so, so we've shifted to calling it agile to calling it the way we work. Uh, which is uh, a little bit more descriptive. We started our journey a couple of years ago, about three years ago, looking at our physical space, and, and it started as a, as a cost exercise. We occupy a lot of space, as I said, about 15,000 head office employees in the GTA. Um, and, and our real estate department came up with a, a master plan to um, buy smaller desks and put people closer together and maybe stack people, you know, bunk desking. And, um, and, and our real estate department uh, presented this plan that it was going to be great because we we're going to save all this money. And our head of HR said, is anyone going to actually want to work there? And so she challenged us to go out and, and, and she, I'm a, a, a career banker. And she said, let's bring in somebody from the business and let's see what is the leading edge out in the world. And let's see if we can create a work environment that actually inspires us, that brings us together, that drives a culture that uh, we want to have as a company. And so I'm going to describe a little bit one specific aspect of our journey. Uh, and, and that is something called activity-based working. So our, our, our overall program, uh, transforming the, how these 15,000 people in head office work, has, has a number of components. Uh, but I'm really going to focus on the top right corner, activity-based working. If you're more interested in, in any of the other aspects, we can chat at a break or something. Um, activity-based working is a, is a little bit like Agile that Katrina described, but similar in many respects. And as we were looking at what does the future of our office look like, this is some data that we got from a company called Leesman in the UK that, uh, that really influenced us. And, and this is a company that does uh, workplace surveys, and they now have over 250,000 people. I encourage you to look them up, Leesman, uh, and look at some of their data. And um, we saw this particular data is, is, is an extraction of five different questions from uh, a survey they do that has over 40 questions about people's workplace and asks about natural light and how you spend your time and, and wellness. Um, but these f five questions we pulled together, the, the questions were, is the design of your workplace important to you? And 90% of employees say yes. And maybe the solution is just to hire from the 10% who don't care where they work. I'm not sure if that's a good strategy or not. But, um, and then they asked employees in, embedded in this larger survey these questions. Does your workplace enable you to be productive? Uh, does it give you a sense of community? Is it an enjoyable environment to work in? Are you proud to bring visitors to it? And, and traditional assigned offices score about 50%. 50% of employees say, I agree or strongly agree that this is the case, that my workplace does this. Uh, enclosed offices, private offices do a little better. Uh, and you can see open plan offices, what, what much of our, many of our financial industry uh, colleagues have gone to, scores really poorly. And this is consistent with what you, we've read in the you know, newspapers about how the open plan office is killing us and, and it's you know, hard to concentrate and all those things. And when we looked at this data, there's, there was this green line at the top that represents only about 4% of the respondents and, and we said, we want that. That was a really tough decision to make, right? We want, we want something that employees say, wow, I want to work there. I'm proud to bring visitors to. What is this data set? And so we explored. And uh, this is something called activity-based working. And, and, and it's really the, 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 the expansion, the evolution of the agile uh, model that Katrina described. Um, so activity-based working is this idea. And, and it's very similar to what we just heard, is, is that our days consist of a whole bunch of tasks we all need different settings to do those tasks most effectively. I'm going to do a little exercise with you to explain that. And we need environments that both support focus work and collaboration. And I think historically, and Adam, I think this was your experience, that traditional work environments might over-index on the ability to do focus work, but they, they suck, that's a technical term, for collaboration. And, and, and um, if you've worked in agile environments, like an agile development environment where 10 people are sitting at the same table, they're great for collaboration, but they're really poor for focus work. We need uh, environments that enable both of these. Some of the research we've seen, all, also from Leesman, is that the most important people do, let's just show, um, what do you think? Is the most important work that you and your teams do the collaboration or the focus work? Raise your hand if you think it's a collaboration. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's a focus. If we ask your employees, 93% of them will say for their focus work. Okay? 
people believe that that's what they get paid to do, which, which is great. I mean, so we need to enable that. We can't create work environments that, that disable people's ability to concentrate and do focus work. And that's what activity-based working is like. So I'm going to just, we're going to do a little exercise. I want you to count to nine. Um, so all of you should have a, a more or less the right number of fingers to do this with me. Um, on the left hand, your left hand side, are four things that we typically do uh, individually or alone. So if you spend two hours or more a week, just give yourself a point on this. Uh, in individual focus, don't interrupt me work, count that as one, all right? Do you spend two hours a week in individual focus work? I'm looking for some nodding heads, right? What about individual process work? This is calendaring, checking emails, may maybe some light reading. This is more like interrupt, you can interrupt me work, it's okay. Do you spend 5% of your week doing that, two hours or more a week? What about phone calls? Do you do phone calls? Sure. One-on-ones, -on do you spend two hours a week with someone, maybe coaching or receiving coaching one-on-one -on -one across the desk? So those are the individual activities, and on the right-hand side, um, are some of the group activities, inform, coordinate, create, dialogue. I won't get into a lot of detail, but typically in a traditional office, the left-hand side happens at your desk or office. There are four different activities that happen kind of in one setting, a desk typically or an enclosed office. The things on the right-hand side are four different types of activities. They typically happen in a single environment, a meeting room. And what we say in activity-based working is each of these is important and each of these is different, and so we're going to give you a different environment, a different setting to do each of these. And I apologize, the phone rooms didn't come out, right? The little concentration rooms. So you can see we take each of the things that we all do during our week, each of these nine different activities, and we say each of these things is important and deserves to be supported uh, individually with a setting that, that, that allows us to do it. So, so our people in, in, uh, in our act, the way we work, our W3 environments, uh, will go to a setting for focus work or concentration, as, as Katrina called it. They'll do some work in process areas where they're with their colleagues in open spaces. If they have a video call or a phone call, they'll go into an enclosed room to do that. Oh, there's a two-minute sign. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, we have a ton of different environments for that interaction to happen in a really great way. And all of the different group stuff happens in all different kinds of settings. Now, what I'm showing is pictures of furniture, and I try to avoid pictures of furniture because this really isn't about uh, uh, furniture. Uh, none of these spaces are, are booked, none of these spaces are, um, they're all available and shared. I guess the meeting rooms, the larger meeting rooms are booked. So what does a, uh, an activity-based environment look like? It doesn't look like the, the open plan office that we showed you as the bottom line in that first chart. Instead, it has a huge diversity. And so I might start my day sitting at a table in an open area in the middle, meet with my team. I will go on a conference call, and I'll do that in a booth in one of those enclosed rooms. I'll have a one-on-one -on -one touch base. I'll do it at those red couches. And then I'll work on my presentation for, for this conference, and I'll do it in a quiet zone in the bottom right where there's no interruptions and no phone calls. And as I move from setting to setting, I give back that other setting. And at no time is my backpack occupying space that I'm not occupying. And so activity-based working is this idea that each of these tasks is important and uh, deserving of, of attention. So how do we transform how 15,000 people work so that this is effective? Because it's not about real estate. And, and Adam also suggested, said, I don't know if I'm gonna paraphrase, that um, you can't let furniture change culture for you, right? A beanbag chair or a foosball table doesn't change culture. Neither does a gigantic real estate project. So to change culture, we invest heavily in the process. And, and so we take the nine months before we move anybody in and really say, we're going to get you there. We're going to give you, we're going to understand what you do. We're going to give you new tools and technology. We're going to measure how you work. We do a lot of measurement. We're going to train you. We're going to help you digitize your paper so that in the end, by the time you move in, and everybody starts with resistance at the start when they get the announcement and fear. And by the time they move in, they're ready and they're waiting and they're sitting in an empty cubicle with nothing but their laptop and their headset because they've digitized their paper, they've ported their phone, and they're, they're mentally ready. Their teams are already having huddles and they're just waiting to be in an environment that supports the new way of working. And so our, uh, our bet is that this is not a real estate project. It's a change exercise, and it's not about communication, it's not about sentiment, it's about giving people the skills and the tools so that when they move, they're able to work in this new way. I sit in rooms of uh, well, different sizes, including this much, where people look at me and I show them, this is how you're gonna be working in nine months, and they look at me like you're crazy. Um, and, and as I said, we've got 1,000 people working this way, and it's transformative. So what are we seeing as the results? And I'm sure my time is up, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Um, <laughs> I took, the, I took the scale off because, you know, this is in internal proprietary data, uh, but I'll, I'll give you a hint to the scale. The after on the collaboration, strongly agree, out of a five-point scale, is 50%, 51%. So people say they're able to collaborate much more. They're able to be, their workplace enables to be, them to be more productive 
We've reduced our real estate costs and our paper consumption as well. So it's really been an astounding journey. We've uh, got 14,000 more people to go, and that will be over the course of the next three or four years. Um, but it was really transformational to, to, to realize it's not about where you work. It's this idea that, that you're going to work in a new way, we're going to mobilize you, and we're going to just uh, give you all the tools so that it becomes natural and, uh, and automatic. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, uh, by all means, let's connect at the break. Thank you.